Hi, it's Jess here from Nigeria Creates. Thank you for joining me today and welcome back. If you are um, new to my channel and you've stuck by, thank you very much. And those of you that have been watching me for years, um, I do really, really uh, appreciate it. So um, I started this yesterday. Um, you might have seen my lovely happy mail. Um, what I've decided to do is make a journal with all original ephemera not using any sort of digitals um, at all so this was the book and I thought I'll start by doing this so I'm going to use the actual book cover for the cover for for the journal and I've took it apart and I have got this was in the book I didn't I didn't um, know that um, until I went through it which I thought was quite cute so I've taken the whole book apart left left it in all its signatures um, and um, so that's what we've got I have gutted books on my channel before um, so I wasn't going to show you how I did it I was just going to show you what I was going to do now and then I thought well actually I've got newbies they might not know I know there are some people um, from their comments are just starting out so I thought I'll show you what I did and then I went through all my books and before I chop into any book I check um, on the internet, I check about its copyright status and I check whether or not I'm holding a fortune in my hand. Um, and <laughs> I have got loads of books that are in that are out of copyright. I know I've got loads and loads of books, but I must have picked up 10 that were all out of copyright. And if they're out of copyright, then I know I can scan things in it. And some of them actually were worth a little bit more than I'm comfortable at chopping up. I've got lots of books that are probably worth about selling on secondhand sites for, you know, five, six, seven, even up to £10. And I think, oh, I'll chop it up. There's enough. There's there's £10 worth of real estate in there. So I'm quite happy to chop it up. But I was finding books that were worth two, three, four times that. So it was like, all right, I can't chop that one up. So it was like, oh, no, another one. Normally I'm like, yay, it's out of copyright. But I was like, oh, I just want a book. Anyway got this one it's still in copyright so um so it's it's fine and actually i bought this book because i really like the color of the pages so um so yeah but um yeah this was published in 1951 and the author only died in the 70s so um yeah it's uh it's not it's not one and it's i can't remember what it was selling for but probably i don't know yeah low enough for me to be happy with now i want to keep the cover now this one's falling off um so i'm not so bothered about and obviously in terms of value of the book you know the, the better the condition the more valuable it is but um this one obviously isn't very valuable because it's falling apart so you can see the um that sort of cloth there so what i do it's quite difficult to show on camera this one's already started but i kind of go down that bit there between the the cover and the book plate and i do try to cut the go quite gently because it's quite easy to chop that off so you want to make sure it's it's well apart when you're chopping down this bit here. But I prefer to do it stood up and get my finger in and make sure there. So once you've got one side off, the other side's much easier because you can like pull it apart. I say this one's helped by the fact that it was already coming apart so there is our cover and then we've got the book um, block that's what it's called a book block um, what I try to do is to get this bit off because I just think it's interesting so this is all the stuff that I pulled off the other one and um, I just think that that will be interesting on bibs and bobs don't quite know what i'll do with them yet and so i do try and see if this is gonna come off in any easy way it's not it's it's stuck fast 
actually stuck fast this one um, so what I do then is I kind of see there and you can see where they're sewn in and so if you pull it slightly out you can see where the threads are and you can get them apart like so. I won't do the whole book. In the, there we go. So that is them taken off and I really like these pages that are plain because that would be a nice page in the the journal now what you've got here is if I find because I've cut the the threads it should now pull apart quite nicely so that can be a nice page in the journal so it's sort of folded over you can take a few of the bits of the gubbins off that's that's on there but that could get sewn back into the journal um, and um, and that will be a nice page in the journal paying respect to the original book you usually get at the front and at the back you get some plain sheets which I really really like but they're often stuck so it's hard to get so that they're stuck together the beginning the beginning bits Vic signature are usually glued so it's hard then to get a page where you've got a plain bit that's that's drawn so my thoughts were that I would just fold that one in half like so so we've got a shorter page in the journal which I also like so that'll be a nice little page ready to journal or it could just be popped in a pocket or in an envelope and you've got this nice vintage paper to draw on. Did I say this was the 50s? So that's quite old really. Um, so, so yeah, that is what I did. And then I just go along you, the other way. If you can't, I'm going to put my glasses down for this. If you if you can't do the um, cutting of the um, so if you're not taking the cover off, you're doing say an altered book and you want to leave them in. You can go to the bit where you see the threads there, threads are there, there and there, and you can get. I like to use a stitch ripper, and you can go and split the threads. that way it's just an alternative way the only thing with this is you won't get the um the bits that are the bits that are stuck show you what i mean and this bit's done i try to do it to not ruin the page Oh, you've only done one string there, Jess. There we go. So now these will pull out. So again, you've got your page ready to go in a journal. That one pulls out nicely. That's quite a nice one to put actually towards the front of a journal. And now we've got to the bit where the page are pages are stuck, so they won't pull out. So this is where they're glued to this bit of the cloth. So they're a bit more problematic to get out. I've just pulled that out, but it doesn't matter. So again, I've got another little sheet of paper there. That one's got quite a lot of white on it. Well, it hasn't really, as on that side. So there we go. So that's that's the way we go. And then as you take signatures out, you've got a little bit more purchase then on this side bit. So you might be able to begin to to get it off. But if not, I'll just 
carry on, carry on the way I was going. You can see where a signature ends and another one begins. At the top here. And it's just a matter of this one's not coming apart really as easy as the other. Sometimes it's better to sort of kind of go further up in the book to try and get it that well glued. Not quite so well glued at the bottom. It might be better off going at the bottom. Oh, and that's that's coming down a bit nicely there. Oh, that bit's coming off. Oh, marvellous. How marvellous is this? So, going gentle, gentle. So this top piece coming off. Oh, this is going to be really lovely to be used in the book in some way. Right, don't want to go any further. Stop in there. So there you can see. All of this bit that's glued on, but we can we can we can we can separate these a bit better now. There you go. There's my tip. Have a little look which ends better, and on here the bottom was better. So now just. Pulling these threads would be easier if this was out of the way. Got it in. And we've got a bit of the book, the book page before on there. I don't really want to rip, but I have managed to rip. There'll be some people will find this difficult to watch and I apologise for that, but I haven't got a problem with wrecking a book. Pulling these bits off now. Because that's what I bought it for. I probably paid, I took the price off I think, probably paid about a pound for this. Oh, just pulled a lot of thread off that. So yeah, it doesn't bother me. When you buy a book for this reason, then it's not rare. It's not a first edition. I did discover I had a first edition of something, so it's like, right, all right, I won't, I won't, I won't break that one up. So there we go. And I will use these in collage. They're beautiful colours, and some will go in the journal but there's far more in here than I would use in the journal so I would just continue doing this and then eventually seeing if I can get this off All right, it seems to be in two layers oh look that's coming off nicely there so I've got a little bit like that that'll be lovely with on a tag with a word on the back I often do that with cheesecloth so that's fab be able to now pull the next bit off maybe the knife to help <coughs> oh i got me coffee oh forget about that and then it goes cold i get so engrossed and i forget about things right i can't get any more off so there that's what i'm gonna continue to do so i'm gonna put this one side I'll probably do that I was watching TV tonight and I've Ed looking at me going you're destroying a book yeah I am Ooh. so there we are left with a book like so and I'm going to reinforce this section here because that's cloth this book's actually covered in cloth and then there's just a flimsy bit of card there so I want to reinforce it so we need to measure it 
so we have got a book here that's like seven and a half inches tall i did manage to find a book that was virtually the same size as the original so that i chose to do so that's quite cool so yeah it's just under seven and a half which the other one is as well so it's it's like seven and three eighths and then this bit here should be about an inch the other one's about an inch yeah an inch so what i did was i got some chipboard so i think this was an old um jigsaw puzzle box that i took apart so it's really nice and thick which is great for using it for the book plate because you kind of want it to be about the same size and i can feel along there that's about the same size um i cut one up for the other book and it's a bit thinner so i cut two that are going to go together so that's the other way round it could use cereal box and layer it up um but uh, yeah that's what that's what i'm doing on this one so i'm not sure actually because this one's so thick whether or not my no my guillotine is not going to do this so i'm gonna have to cut it cut it with my knife so where's my where's my board So I bring in my board and bring in my ruler with the ridge so I don't cut myself. I'm going to, first off, want to neaten this edge a bit because So I'm going to put that straight on there. It's just simple. I wasn't going to cut this down to be the right size, but I am now. So I'm going to put that on there. I know these each of these big squares are an inch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a quarter. That's half. We're slightly under the half, aren't we? So... I go there. So I bought a heavy duty knife. Trouble is, I can't get it to stay up. I don't know if that's a design fault or if that is actually the way it's supposed to be. But it's slightly annoying that I can't get it. My fault for not spending out the extra money and getting proper Stanley. But I didn't so that was that so that's a nice straight edge there I might have to cut a smidge off but that'll do for now so now I've got a smaller bit to work with I'm gonna I'm looking at that line there and that line there let's put it back on the straight so I can cut a straight line down there I like to have this ruler with my finger guard because this is dead sharp and if I slipped it'd be a nightmare so put that there and that there that's now nice and straight you want to cut it at the inch there obviously if you're working in centimeters you might have a mat with centimeters on I don't so I can now push right down hard on there and go down up against my blade that should be that should be right so you need to make sure if it's in place that the book still folds over 
so the book still folds over so that's cool but I want to take a smidge just a smidge off the top so I'm lining it up there so I've got it straight go down there take a smidge off the other because I did the other with thinner card so I'm going to cut two together I was actually able to cut on my guillotine but this thick one ain't going to cut on my guillotine so that will now fit in there nicely and what I thought was that I might be able to stick it under the book cloth. The other one bent slightly, but that was my thoughts that it would go under the book cloth. So you wouldn't see the end and the end still going over. That was that was where I was coming from. Now the nice thing about this going in is that I got no danger of cutting myself. So is that one an inch as well? Yeah, just about. Just about, but not quite. So let's leave that there for now. So I've got the two. No. Yeah. Let's bring this one in so I can show you twice now can't I just in case you don't get it the first time so this one actually I'm not sure that I need the second one on that that makes it a little bit bigger I think we might get away with just the one we will get away with just the one and this one slips under there and this one Peeled up slightly. Is this the piece I'm using? Oh, I don't think it is. That's the bit you've just cut off, Jess. I am a Burke. Yeah, so it was these two. We did need two together. So, and they will slip under there. They will, but I don't want to do it now because I'm filming. But that one had broken up a bit, so it can go over. I mean, it's broken up there, so I've got to do some fixing on this one, which you may well have to do on your own. Look, that's come off now. So let's get these two glued together first so that they can be um, drying whilst we do other things. So I'm just going to... Put some glue. This is Colol glue. It's a solvent glue. It's like Beacon 3-in-1, apparently. I can't vouch for it. Don't have Beacon 3-in-1. Put, Put that down. Get my silicone brush. So the whole surface is covered. There we go. And then we'll stick this on the top. You've got wiggle room. Gonna clip on it got more than one clip don't know where the other ones are right now but I've got these big ones so we'll use them so we'll just leave that to dry whilst we work on mending get the glue off that there we go we work on mending this cover here down the side um, 
I quite like the fact that it's a little bit that it's a little bit um, torn. I think it adds to the look of it. This one's not torn at all, but you do want to give the sides a bit of reinforcement because this is just a bit of cloth. I did wipe this, this one, with a baby wipe. I haven't wiped this one with a baby wipe. So I'm gonna do that now and um, see if this one is as filthy as that one. It was quite bleh. And I did it. But just wanted to get it had it had some like gluey stuff on that one, which is why I wanted to sort of wipe it over. I mean I will be covering the book with something, but I just want it to be a little bit cleaner with me working and look at that lots and lots of horrible dirt coming off get some I mean I don't particularly want to take any of these stuff off and uh, I've got this there's a you can see the difference it is cleaning up quite nicely um, there is a an embossed bit there or debossed which I might pick up with something. But I did find myself wanting to wash my hands all the time when I was working with the other book. So I thought, let's give it a little bit of a clean over. And that, it did bring up, the other one was green, so it brought up some of the colour out of the paper. But there we go. So that's what I wanted what I wanted to do. Throw that away now. So, cloth is a, an obvious thing. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to take that out. Might use that. Something else. So a little bit of cloth over this to um, sort this out. And I might take that rough edge off there. So it's a little bit neater. Yep. Let me do that. So I'm going to get a pair of scissors and cut that little section off. And this can be used. In the journal somewhere, nice little decoration. Just double checking. Yeah, I'm not cutting the book cloth. I didn't think I was because I could see it there. So I just think this will make it so much easier for reinforcing. So got that off. Very nice. That's going up there. I've got a nice little pile collecting up there. So now we can see a little bit better. And I might do the same on this side. I think it's probably easier going this way. So I can see a little bit better that I'm not cutting in to the green cloth you can see that you know the card that the cloth is attached to by doing it this way and then you know you're not cutting the cloth and I need to tell you that I've never done this before this is my first time doing this particular thing But I have seen similar being done, so I'm not working totally blind. But I often watch videos and then I only remember half of it. 
so you never know what I'm going to end up doing. There we go. So that's much, much, much neater. Now, move you out the way. I'll do the same with this one eventually, but not on camera, I don't think. So now we want to, I'm going to put some cloth across that, I think, before I put the spine bit down. Um, I've got to me on the floor. I've got some cotton here. I think this was curtain lining. I have, I think I tea dyed it. Um, so that, that will work nicely. So I want it to go the other side of it. So I'm going to cut it about there. Shall I give you an about? We're going to cut it. Oh, about three inches. This really isn't about. I haven't measured. There, so let's rip it down. Oh, I didn't cut enough there for ripping chairs. Quite like the ripped edge on it. The trouble is, cut. It rips one way better than the other. It's not wanting to rip, so it will rip that way better than this way. It will rip this way. Probably easier for someone who hasn't got issues with their hand like I have. Oh, there, it's going now. Nice to have a bit of bit of that. So that stuck down will help that bit there at the top. So I'm just going to glue it down as it is. There's a bit of me that's thinking that I might put some book tape down first. I've got this construction tape. Trouble is it's black. I might use brown book got this brown picture frame tape I'm going to use that first I'm changing my mind it's what I do so not use this yet okay. so I'm going to put some down the side Trim it after. You can use Tyvek. People use Tyvek. But... I wanted to try this and I'm going to put cloth on it so it won't rip. And there'll probably be cloth on the outside as well. So it'll be well sorted. But now, cut that off. A bit dangerous there. I went, I went in without my glasses being on. Probably not a good idea. And, and of course now 
I'm covering those end bits up there so I can't do what I thought I might do which was um, tuck tuck the end in I don't matter I don't matter I often have these ideas and then I do something and then I can't do the idea and I'm sure I'm not alone in that so there we go so then I'm going to pull this back a little tad so let me cut that off there Yeah. Now, because that one's like split a bit, you are going to end up seeing the tape on the other side, potentially. That's why I did this side first. But we're not worried about that for the moment. I'm sure we can get around it. I might. Cut that in a straighter line. Fairly straight. And so what I might do is start with it up there. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Tad. stick down yeah cooking on gas quite like that done that so now let's come in here that bit tailed off the bottom there there we go so now That is much better now. So we've got a whole layer there of our picture frame tape. It's doubled over there, but it doesn't matter. So that is working a treat. So then we can we can stick that in place. We know the sides. Are reinforced stick that in place 
and then put the cloth over the top. Now I might put a bit of book binding tape over the ends so we see brown and not grey board. Just wrapping it. And I just think, then looking down, I've got that brown showing, which would be better, I think. Looks a bit older. Yeah, cooking on gas, doing that. And it does then hold got something then holding these two ends together as well so I'm just pinching the sides and then I'll just go down down there be grand so we are just going to put, put our glue like we did before I'm going to take all this off my scissors sticky sticky use them again in a sec so I want glue all along there Bring that out. Stick that side down. Then I'm using this, so it's a solvent glue. Just trust it a little bit better than any of my water-based glues. You can get book binding glues. Don't have those. Spread it all out. That do nicely. And then move the cloth out of the way. So I want to centre this because you need a gap either side. So that the book will close. There we go. Book closes, book closes. That's what we want to do. I can only put a clip at the top and at the bottom. Stick one at the top. And I do think it needs to move up a tad. Do have a little bit of wiggle room there. Check. We're all right there, we're all right there. There we go. So, I'm going to clip down the top, clip down the bottom, and there. I'm actually, that's too big. I'm going to put something heavy on there 
to weight it down. And then we'll just leave it to dry and then I'll come back and we'll stick the cloth down and that's our cover prepped. Okay, so I have been weighting that down. So it's been sat there for ages, so it should be ready now. And i uh, just put these back so I know where they are when I want to actually use them. Right. I oh, forgot about that. Let's chuck you up there. So that's that. Nicely stuck. So that's my book. So it kind of stretches that nicely. So it's not going to be a massive journal. I might put two little signatures in there. Not sure. And then we're going to glue this in place. So I might just trim it a tad. Not fully trim it. But there's a bit of me that kind of, kind of wants it to maybe be seen at the top. Oh, I'm going to struggle again. Struggle my hands because I have rheumatoid arthritis. So this is quite hard for me to do. Got ya. Got you, got you, got you. And it's been really, really hot. Scorchio hot. And um, yeah, and I got I, my hands really swelled a lot over the weekend. And all my joints, I was in quite a lot of pain. People sort of go, oh, you should live somewhere warm, then you'll feel better. Well, Oh, this weekend was anything to go by. I felt worse than I have ever. So, yeah. Um, so, oh, my camera seems to be a bit on the wonk. Is that a little bit better? Right, so I'm going to stick that down. Yeah, and we'll see a little bit over the top and the bottom, which, which I'm okay about. So we want to make sure we've got a good coverage there because that was where we were ripped a bit there. I think we've covered that really well. So I'm thinking I might use Fabutac for this because I've got it. Because I've got it, I'm going to use it. I could not believe how much this has gone up. I mean, I use it sparingly. This is my second bottle and I bought my first bottle in 2020 and it's 2023 now. And um, I think I paid about £7 for it. Well, it's double that now and the rest. So I'm not going to be rushing to buy another bottle and I actually think my collar probably works and I know I watched Roxy Creations she, she uses BVA to, to stick fabric I don't think we necessarily need all these expensive glues really I'm going to go down because I want to push the fabric down there, so let's push some glue down there. And I think, I think ingredients wise, I ought to check actually, but I think Collal's very, very similar and it does get really thick and I know you can put like nail varnish remover in it, can't you, to sort of thin it a bit. And I find it really hard to squeeze. Again, that's my RA. I go, I buy glue that's easy to squeeze. So there's certain tacky glues that lots of people use that I don't like because I can't squeeze them. So it has to have easy squeeze. That's why I like my Sugar Bell bottle, which again, they've like gone up ridiculously in price. My hands are proper sore now squeezing they're absolutely ringing 
ringing with pain. Oh, suffer for me art. That's what I do. There we go. So I'm going to lay this on. So I'm going to go down in the crease. So we've got a nice extra layer there. Now they're coming over there. I mean, I know Fabitac, you don't get that bleeding through, which you sometimes get. I do find I have used collar and you do get a bit of it coming, coming through. So let's put little bits, little bits here. Need a bit extra there. Do you need any anywhere else? A bit down there to be fair, Jess. And we at the bottom here. We'll have a little bit. We'll have a little bit down here as well. I did put some Fabi Tack in one of my little bottles. Uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't go through the nozzle. So never bothered trying that again. And it does like explode out the top. What have I got left there? It's hard because it's, I think I've got about that much left. So yeah, given how long I've had it. And during lockdown, I spent, I did a load of it, mending edge jeans. Do you know what's it with men? They like wear things that are falling apart. They've got great big holes in because they like get emotionally attached to their clothes. And it's like, just chuck it out. Chuck it out. I'll buy some new. Although getting to shops was difficult. Couldn't get clothes shops. They were non-essential, so weren't open half the time. So there. So that's that. And uh, mopping up a bit of glue there. I like that frayed bit coming over the coming over the top that's well nice so that is all prepared um, for having signature sewn in and then we might put some other things over the top but that is my my cover repaired and um, ready and the other one I thought I'd do it slightly differently this one um, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to stick that to there and I might do this one as a hidden spine. So I'll show you the difference. So then we don't get any sewing on the spine. Just just options. So um, that's what I thought I'd do here. So you can see the two ways of doing it. So you're getting, you're getting a bog off, a buy one, get one free. Oh, and here I am again. Oh, hurts. There we go. Oh, that's all stuck there. Pull out the threads. I've kept a few of these threads because they might be quite nice behind clusters. So I've got loads of original ephemera. Um, that I can use. I've got loads of postcards. I've got loads of photos, cigarette cards, all that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to using, getting things out of Hordsville, getting them used. So I'm going to go over this 
I see people hold it like that. I can't do it. I can't make a fist. So I can't do my glue like that. Move it along like that. So then we'll sew the signatures to this and then stick stick the fabric when when that's done um, and uh, so and then you don't have the stitching have I got a preference to which side not particularly so eyeballing that for the center So when this one's been sewn into here, this one will be sewn onto this. And then once the signatures are sewn on that, then we just glue the whole thing in here. So you'll be able to see the two ways of doing that. So that is, that is, how I have prepared a cover. It's probably not the only way of doing it, but it's the way I've done it. I've now got glue on there, like a burk. Um, but it should just rub off. It does. It rubs off. No harm done. And uh, yeah, and I can decide afterwards how to, how I'm gonna cover this. And, you know, if I'm going to do something on the inside, like pockets and things. And then this one's prepared. Um, but it's going to have a hidden spine. With that tucked in. Yeah, so that is the two covers ready. So next time we'll be gathering all my um, original ephemera to make the signature um with um we'll see how long we get and whether or not we have time to do pockets flips etc and then we'll be adding me postcards and things that i've got to put in it okay thanks for joining me don't forget to like and subscribe press that little notification bell and then you'll you'll not miss any of these these episodes i'll start a playlist uh with it as well um don't yet know what i'm going to call it probably um original ephemera journal maybe something like that not very catchy that is it but we'll we'll have a decide all right bye for now